I'm pleased at this time to call upon Dave Tompkins, member of the graduating class, to announce the gifts to the university. Thank you, President Toot. For those of you unaware of the graduate gift program, in our final year at university here at UBC, in addition to our tuition, the university collects a $7 fee from each graduating student. A council of elected representatives from all faculties then donates this money on behalf of the graduating class. The graduate class of 2010 donated to three different programs. First, they donated $10,000 to the AMS bursary program to help aid future generations of students cope with the rising cost of education. Second, they donated $10,000 to the UBC Alumni Association for student-directed programming that will take place at the new Alumni Center to be built in 2013. Finally, they donated $5,000 to the UBC Learning Exchange, a program that brings together students and other members of the UBC community to provide free educational resources to people in the downtown east side and other inner city neighborhoods. So please join me in thanking the graduate class for their generous gifts. I've been given a few moments to share some reflective words with my fellow graduates. Seems like just yesterday that the Hogwarts sorting hat sat you down, read your mind, sang a song, and then told you which discipline of science you should study. Bazinga. There's no such thing as a sorting hat right now that can read your mind yet. But it's a bit of an urban myth that on your first day of university, a professor will sit you down and tell you to look to the person on the left of you and look to the person on the right of you and warn you that one of you won't make it to graduation. And perhaps you had a melodramatic professor who said just that. But I'm going to be a little melodramatic. Graduates, look to the left of you, look to the right of you. It's my absolute pleasure to say that all three of you made it to graduation. <laughs> I want you to take this moment to congratulate each other. I think the high five never goes out of style, but suitable replacements are fist bumps, handshakes, or solemn nods. So please, everybody, high five. Now, a few astute graduates have seen the error in my look to the left of you, look to the right of you system. Because there are people in the aisle seats who don't have anyone, they only have one person to high five. And I myself am an outlier because I chickened out and didn't high five the president and the chancellor. <laughs> As scientists, our graduates have learned that many mistakes are made at these boundary conditions. And that often the devil is in the details and it's the statistical outliers that often tell the story or make it more interesting. That's right, graduates. I called you scientists. You now have a piece of paper that tells the world you are a scientist. But I think you should tell the world you're a scientist. The next time you're at a party and someone asks what you do, say, I'm a scientist. If a telemarketer calls and asks for occupation, scientist. If you're busy working on a project and someone asks what you're doing, say, leave me alone, stand back. I'm doing science. <laughs> But as often quoted in superhero movies, with great power comes great responsibility. So as a scientist, if you become angry or lose your temper, you're now a mad scientist. <laughs> the world needs more science and more scientists. And regardless of wherever your career path you end up going down, I encourage you to keep your inner scientist alive. Less than a third of Canadian teens believe that science has any relevance to their everyday life. But what our graduates here realize is that science is all around us. And unfortunately, so is ignorance about science. And I'm not just talking about the big science, the science that threatens our lives and our planet. I'm talking about the little science, too, and the general lack of scientific thinking. There's a study at the, in the US at an Ivy League college on the basic task of boiling water in a pot on the stove. And almost a third of the participants fail to recognize that if you put less water in the pot, it will boil faster and use less energy. In a similar study, over half the participants could not sufficiently explain why correlation does not imply causation. It's human nature to fall prey to something called confirmation bias. That's when you have a preconceived belief or hypothesis you're trying to support. And you favor evidence that supports your beliefs and ignore contrary evidence. It's part of the reason that a third of the population out there believes that they have lucky numbers or that some numbers are unlucky. And a third believe that astrology or horoscopes are actually accurate and scientific. As scientists, you have accumulated a lot of knowledge about your chosen field. It's likely you will forget more science than 90% of the population will ever learn. And as graduates, your instincts are very sharp. But you also have the training and experience not to trust your instincts, and that you must rely on evidence to make your decisions. 
And if you encounter evidence that proves you were wrong, it's neither embarrassing nor humiliating. It's just good science. UBC encourages its students to become global citizens. And I encourage you all to become scientific citizens. When you see bad science around you, big science and small science, take the time and try to correct it and to teach others the importance of critical thinking. Even more importantly, take the opportunity to get a young person in elementary school or high school excited about science. Some of your very first teachers who may have inspired you to become scientists are in this room. They are your parents and loved ones. They taught you the mathematical topology of tying your shoelaces and the physics of riding a bike. They have been with you since your first day of kindergarten, so please take the time in your own way to thank them. To my own parents who are watching me on the internet right now, hi mom, hi dad, I love you very much, and can you believe your, doctor, your son is a doctor of philosophy? I barely believe it myself. Well, some of you are continuing on into academia, where you'll have the opportunity to wear increasingly elaborate and colorful robes like such as these. For most of you, this is the last chapter in a long academic story. For some of you, your journey may have been in a straight line, but for others, like myself, it was a twisty path with some dead ends and detours. But regardless of whatever brought you here and where your life takes you tomorrow, I encourage you all once more to let your inner scientist be alive. Feed your curiosities, be a critical thinker, and continue your pursuit of knowledge. Do your best to make this world a better and more scientific place. Congratulations once again. Thank you very much, Dr. Tompkins.